is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video today ladies and gentlemen we are going to be getting into some mdt pick fed information but before we get into it i do believe that action figure surgery 50 will be coming up tomorrow uh it took me a lot longer to get through that video than i expected a lot of stuff going on with that video so that uh that explains the uh you know everything going on with that but here today, guys, we're going to discuss the MDT pick fed. I know you're going to ask when the next one is. It has been a long time. It has been a long time since MDT Hell's Gate, which is why I am uploading this video and, and talk about what happened at MDT Hell's Gate because it's been a little bit, and I wanted you guys to be up to date for when Vindication 16 is up, and it should be any day now. I mean, I'm not going to give you a specific date, but it should be any single day now. But um, I wanted to upload this video because I wanted you guys to know exactly what was going on, what took place at Hell's Gate. That way, when you watch Vindication 16, it'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that because it has been a while. I actually rewatched the entire MDT Hell's Gate the other day just to, you know, get myself motivated just to watch and see, you know, how we did and everything like that. And I was really pleased with what I saw. I was really, you know, taken back by it. I actually watched the live chat and I appreciate everybody who watched that show live. It meant a lot to me to see everybody's reactions to the show, what took place at the show, and you guys make it all worth it when I upload the shows. So getting into it, guys, let's talk about what took place at MDT Hell's Gate. We had two Elimination Chamber matches. This is our last show before we get into the Mania. We have, you know, of course, our weekly shows first, but the last pay-per-view before we get to the WrestleMania of MDT, which is My Damn Nation. And so we had to get through the Elimination Chamber-esque pay-per-view, which was Hell's Gate. We featured two Elimination Chamber matches. First off, let's start off with the MDT Championship Elimination Chamber, guys. This one was absolutely wild. We had a lot of action take place in this matchup. A lot of people enjoyed this matchup for sure. So in the MDT Elimination Chamber, guys, we did have Chris Jericho, Velveteen Dream, Roman Reigns, CM Punk, Cedric Alexander, and Jeff Hardy. Of course, before that matchup even started, CM Punk was taken out by Dolph Ziggler. He had his hood on. He came out. He attacked CM Punk. He locked himself inside the chamber and took CM Punk's place. CM Punk was no longer able to compete after being surprised, attacked, face bashed into the chamber, super kicked. He had to be escorted out of the arena. Ziggler locks himself inside and takes CM Punk's place. If you guys remember on MDT Live's Go Home Show, I think it was episode 15 for Hell's Gate, CM Punk actually won the second chance battle royal, but he like was gone. He wasn't even in the ring really. There was like six or seven guys in the ring. Ziggler looked like he was the winner and then CM Punk came out of nowhere eliminating him and winning that last place. And it seems like Dolph Ziggler was super pissed off about this. So he uh, took actions into his own hands and paid Punk back, it looks like, at Hell's Gate, taking him out of action and replacing him in the chamber matchup. So Dolph Ziggler did come up short in the matchup, losing to Roman Reigns at the end, but that was very impressive. All these guys in this matchup beat the hell out of one another, but at the end of the day, Roman Reigns did end up hitting the spear on Dolph Ziggler to retain his MDT championship. So it looks like Roman Reigns will be the champion going into MDT My Damn Nation, which is very excellent. So after the matchup, what took place is, you know, we're, we're hanging out. Roman Reigns is celebrating in the ring. Out of nowhere, the doctor of Thugonomics, John Cena, returns and he brings out the Money in the Bank briefcase that was gifted to him by Eric Bischoff, who gifted it to John Cena because he thought he was a trustworthy source. We knew that RVD, the original Mr. Money in the Bank, was the capture of that Money in the Bank briefcase and he got ran over way back when before sold out. He has not been seen since. You know, they had an investigation into that. They could not find any evidence or anything like that connected to the case. And John Cena here returns as the Doctor of Thugonomics with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And he tried to cash in the briefcase. But then out of nowhere, Rob Van Dam returns after being run over, after being put on the shelf for so very long. And he accuses John Cena of being the man who ran him over. And he chases John Cena out of the arena. Very big news right here. We do not know for sure if John Cena was the one that ran over RVD. But RVD seems to think so. And he wants his Money in the Bank briefcase back. And it doesn't seem like John Cena wants to give it back because if he did why would he why would he run away you know so I don't know we're just gonna have to see about that but John Cena did try to cash in RVD thwarted that but the MDT championship is looking very very crazy right now with Roman Reigns as champion you had Seth Rollins win the Royal Rumble you got RVD chasing his money in the bank and you have John Cena with the money in the bank briefcase so many things up in the air right now but that was the MDT championship elimination chamber that took place at Hell's Gate our next matchup guys was the United States championship now this one I was excited for, but it didn't even get to take place because Kurt Angle, he came out to the ring. He looked super motivated after being attacked by Jack Swagger and company weeks and weeks. You know, he was he was fired up, ready to go, and apparently he thought he had a championship match, but Jack Swagger comes out in suit, and he basically says, you know, you're not getting a championship match. I never agreed to this, and then they tried to attack Kurt.
Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle did uh, get the, the comeuppance there on Zack Ryder and MVP, but ultimately Jack Swagger did hit him in the back of the skull with the championship and stay in tall over Kurt Angle. So will Kurt Angle be able to compete? Is he going to still be going after the U.S. championship? I wanted to see these two guys lock up, but that was not meant to be at Hell's Gate. So that was our U.S. title situation. We'll see where that goes from here on MDT Live. Next up, guys, we have the Iron Man Championship match. We have Johnny Gargano and Cody Rhodes in the street parking lot brawl or whatever the hell you want to call that matchup. So these guys beat the absolute hell out of each other. Cody Rhodes power bombs Johnny Gargano off the top of the truck. The back of Johnny Gargano's neck hits the door on the way down. Very brutal fall. I have never seen anything like that in a pick fed matchup. So that was insanity. Um, out of nowhere, Pete Dunn comes out of nowhere and attacks Cody. And if you guys remember on the Go Home Show for Vindication, Pete Dunn was taking on Bray Wyatt and Cody Rhodes came out to, of course, t attack the Wyatt Colt and Bray Wyatt when the Bullet Club came out there and he accidentally hit Pete Dunn in the head with the chair trying to take out one of the Wyatt Colt members. So it looks like Pete Dunn was upset about this and retaliated here at Hell's Gate. I think Cody's very fortunate that it did not cost him the Ironman Championship, but Pete Dunn definitely retaliated on Cody Rhodes and that is what he got. But Cody did retain the championship and if you guys remember, Orange Cassidy was shown up at this matchup as well. He was found in the trash can in this parking lot brawl and so it looks like Freshly Squeeze will be here on Vindication to stay as he has been signed by MDT to an MDT contract there for the blue brand. Next up guys let's get into the Tag Team Championship matches. Let's get into the World Tag Team Championship first. We have we had Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose teaming together to take on the Usos for the World Tag Titles. You guys know that this feud runs very deep. This goes way back to the Shield breaking up and the Usos being along with Roman in the bloodline. So basically Seth and Dean were trying to put their differences aside after all all of the shenanigans and all of the beef that these two guys have had. They tried to put their differences aside to go after the Usos who have been beating the hell out of them weeks after weeks for a long, long time now. And uh, they tried to put their differences aside here, but it could not be done. Dean Ambrose double crosses Seth Rollins, hits the Dirty Deeds on the world tag title, and the Usos do retain here. So Dean Ambrose gets back Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, though, doesn't really lose much, right? He doesn't really lose much because he still won the Royal Rumble. So Seth Rollins won the Rumble. Seth Rollins is still on pace to take on Roman Reigns for the MDT Championship at My Damn Nation, but Dean Ambrose definitely was, uh, I guess, repaying Seth Rollins for some of the trouble that he put him through, and he, he does not trust Seth Rollins at all, and he took him out, and Seth Rollins, I, I thought, was doing well there in the matchup. They looked to be coexisting, but Dean Ambrose did double-cross Rollins, and the Usos did retain the World Tag Team Championship championships. However, after the matchup, Randy Orton and Edge rated RKO came out and they hit an RKO on one of the Usos. I think Jay was handcuffed to the to the turnbuckle post and Edge hit him in the chair with a skull and rated RKO put the Usos on notice that they were after those World Tag Team Championships. But out of nowhere, again, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy make their MDT debut and they came down and took out rated RKO. So it looked like we had a three-way battle there. Obviously, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose will no longer be competing for the World Tag Title. So it looks like the World Tag Team Championship picture is going to be the Usos, Jurassic Express, and rated RKO. Who knows where the hell this one's going to go, but three teams are tying up right there at Hell's Gate. This is what took place for those tag team championships, so that will be interesting for sure to see how that plays out on MDT Live. Next up, guys, we have the MDT Tag Team Championships, which was the Young Bucks taking on the Wyatt Colt. The Wyatt Colt did win the number one contendership tournament for the MDT Tag Team Championships, and this was a good match. I love this match a lot. However, at the end of the matchup, Braun and Kane returned. Braun Strowman and Kane looked to be together. Braun Strowman was donning a mask. He, his hair grew out long. We haven't seen him since sold out. He was drugged under the ring after his match with Kenny Omega by Kane. And here he is returning. These, these two hellacious monsters coming together here as a tag team to form an MDT. I don't know how the hell you're going to stop these guys on Vindication, but for the MDT Tag Team Championships, they took out the Wyatt Colt, they took out the Young Bucks, they beat the hell out of everyone in the ring, in the arena. I mean, this this thing got nasty. This was absolutely nasty. They were taking out everybody, and they looked like they couldn't be stopped. I don't know what the hell's going to have to take place for these guys to be stopped, but they look like an unstoppable force right now. And just like on MDT Live, Vindication looks to have three teams battling it out for the MDT Tag Team Championships. So who, will it be Wyatt Colt, who, you know, it looked like they were going to win that matchup a couple of times, or will it be Braun and Kane getting their championship opportunity at My Damn Nation? 
Next up, guys, we did have the MDT Extreme Championship match, which basically was just an open challenge for Kevin Owens, the champion who was just running, running rampant, taking out everyone. There was a fan vote for this thing. You guys even got in on the action, and Buddy Murphy ended up winning the fan vote, and he took Kevin Owens to the limit. This matchup was absolutely nuts. Kevin Owens did, however, at the end chalk up another win for him, adding Buddy Murphy's list to his hit list, and he has uh, taken another victim. Another victim has been slain by KO. He has set the standard. He calls himself the standard of MDT Live, and he has set that standard, man. I mean, he has been taking out everyone, name after name after name, since arriving, traded over from Vindication with the AJ Styles trade. Here he is on MDT Live, and he has made himself known. Extreme champion, and he has just been dealing out shots, man. This man cannot be stopped. He will not be stopped. He refuses to lose. And that was an epic matchup right there. I, I was absolutely blown away by this match. And Buddy Murphy put on an excellent performance. And he has now found a home on the pink brand of MDT Live. And then the last matchup, guys, is the MDT Elite Championship Elimination Chamber. So many things taking place here. I mean, this show was absolutely nuts with all the things that took place. But with the Elite Championship, guys, we had Bray Wyatt. We had Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Aleister Black. The Wyatt Colt had two members coming in, which definitely played a role in this matchup. They were taking out everybody. Aleister Black. Black eliminated AJ Styles. He eliminated Shinsuke Nakamura. The Wyatt Colt were running rampant. Kenny Omega got the dog shit beat out of him. I mean, he got destroyed there. I mean, they, they, he definitely got a lot of that payback, a lot of what was coming to him in this match because they were just beating this man to death. So he was a bloody mess. Adam Cole was a bloody mess. Coming at the end of the matchup, Kenny Omega hit a one-winged angel onto Adam Cole off the top of the pod, probably one of the most nuttiest spots of the night. But after he eliminated Adam Cole, who was escorted by Stretcher, Bray Ray Wyatt and Aleister Black got together. They took out the urn and they were trying to summon the Lord. You know, over the weeks and weeks of vindication, we had been ta hearing and talking about this Lord that Bray Wyatt was talking about. He pulls out the urn and he tries to summon the he tries to summon the Lord there. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. He he finally gets fed up. It looked like he got a little pissed off there. Throws the microphone down. Goes to attack Kenny Omega and finish the job. The lights go out and they come back up. And who is it but none other than the Undertaker making his appearance here at Hell's Gate. I mean, the, the pay-per-view was called Hell's Gate. Here's The Undertaker. Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black freaking out. I mean, they look totally shocked. And it looks like Undertaker was the Lord the entire time. He's trying to plead with The Undertaker to finish the job. And Undertaker looks like he's going to take out Kenny Omega, but he turns the tables and takes out Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black. Double choke slam hits them both with Tombstone pile drivers. Undertaker takes out both of those men. It did not look like he was serving them. It did not look like The Wyatt Colt was serving him. It just looked... I don't know what the hell's going on. Someone was definitely confused on this because The Undertaker took out the Wyatt Colt and then Kenny Omega crawled to cover Aleister Black and Bray Wyatt to retain his Elite Championship. No championship switched hands here at Hell's Gate. Absolutely nuts. After the matchup, Kenny Omega celebrating in the corner. I, I say celebrating. He was absolutely beat to death. It looked like he wasn't celebrating nothing. He was totally just d discombobulated. I don't even know how the man was moving around. But after the matchup, the lights go out. You hear these druids. You hear these demon noises, Brad. And out comes some druids in some hoodies. They look terrifying. They were carrying a casket. All the druids sit the casket down. They stand it up, and the casket opens up to reveal Finn Balor's jacket, who has not been seen since MDT Blackout. It looks to me that Finn Balor is alive, guys, and the jacket was found. You guys know that, that Balor's jacket was missing from the wall on one of those shows, and here it is appearing in the casket, so it looks like Finn Balor may be returning alive. The druids take their hoods off, and you see Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, Tomatana, Tonga and Bad Luck Fale. Balor Club forms and there they are bringing back the life of Finn Balor it seems at Hell's Gate. Kenny Omega looked like he had seen a ghost. He's shaking his head in the ring. This was absolutely nuts. I could not believe it. The My Damn Nation sign lights up. It looks like Finn Balor wants to challenge Kenny Omega at MDT Hell's Gate. We will see how that plays out over the next few weeks leading up to Hell's Gate because right now Kenny Omega does not have a challenger whatsoever. But that was pretty much our Hell's Gate guys. I mean I, I tried my best to explain everything thing that took place and explain the storylines that were coming in. It's been so freaking long, but after Hell's Gate, it took so much out of me mentally. It took so much out of me physically. I have worked on Vindication, but I'm still trying to finish it up. I think I just put so much into that show and I worked so hard on that show that it just drained me physically that I just was not ready to move forward. It's like it really unmotivated me to film and I wanted to make sure that my head was clear 
and I wanted to do it. And I didn't want to force myself to do a show when I didn't want to do a show. So I really wanted to take my time with it. And I think I feel a lot better now, you know, getting back into it. It makes me excited. Watching the shows and stuff like that makes me really excited. But I wanted to get on here and let you guys know that the show is coming. And I wanted to get on here and update you guys because I wanted everyone to know what was going on going into Vindication 16. And if you guys want, go back and watch Hell's Gate. It was a ton of fun. I had a ton of fun re-watching that show. And, you know, sometimes I think about the shows and I'm like, was it even that good or what? I bet it wasn't that good or how was it? And I, I am... I was pretty pleased with the way the show turned out. But anyways, guys, it is coming soon, and it's going to be worth the wait. You guys know it's always worth the wait, but I wanted to get on here and inform you guys, let you guys know what was up with Hell's Gate. I'm sure any diehard fan of the Pig Fed may already know, you know, everything that took place, but I know it's been so long, and sometimes it's hard to remember little details and stuff like that, so I did want to get on here and mention it. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.